Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast, Raw Rundown. My name is Adam Glenn. Over there is Dax Holt. We are two out of two of the people of the Hollywood Raw Podcast, uh, where we give you uh, – right, actually, today's episode is uh, we do our Raw Rundown, which is the top ten stories of the week. Midweek, we usually do an interview. We talk to each other. We talk to a celebrity. It just changes up every week. Uh, this week – how was your week, Dax? Was, did you have a good week? I I had a good week. Nothing to complain about. A um, little tired this week, but I mean, other than that, all good. Yeah, I had, I had a fine week. A fine week. Yeah. I had one of the rookie mistakes of doing my job. I got this amazing interview with John Cena. Okay. Awesome interview. He stops, talks to me. In fact, I got John Cena, and he was sort of like in a rush. And then he saw me, and he goes, "Hold on." Puts his wife inside the place where she was going. Because let me just talk to and sat there, talk to me, get this all at some interview, shake his hand, and then I start walking away. I realize I double pumped the re- record on my camera and didn't record the interview. No. <laughs> See you know oh. that was Dax. Oh the damn. Time, the energy, the money, the interview. I'm like, oh my God. I was so <laughs> upset, dude. Oh my God. And That's happened like, to me twice. Once with Kevin Hart, and then once now with John Cena, and it just hurts, dude. It hurts. Oh God, I can just imagine just watching the money drain out of your wallet as you, yeah. as you walk away. Oh, it's God, that it's, sucks. The other side part of that, well, the that was the bad side. The flip side, I got Conor McGregor, and that's I always that. a good one for me. Now he's in the new movie Roadhouse, which Dax, I didn't tell you, um, we might. We might be part of the junket. Oh yeah, yeah. So we might either a I might if it go if it gets approved by Jake's team, which I'll be surprised if they approve it. But it's getting up to them. A a might be invited to go to the junket and do it myself in person, cool. or b you and I might be interviewing Connor and Jake via street uh, via Zoom for the junket. Oh, meeting. that'd be sick, dude. How cool that'd that be. Awesome. be? Um, so I don't know what's it going to be. It'd be really sick if we get it, but I don't know. I'd be surprised if they allow it because um, I did get to interview Conor McGregor. Uh, I got to meet up with him, and his team is cool. He's like a very manic guy. He's always like, hyped up. He's like, oh yeah, la, la, la. He, he's like a crazy leprechaun. I don't know what to say. I say that because he's <laughs> Irish, but he's. Um, I did talk to him. It's funny, but as I'm talking to his publicist, was like screaming at me, like you know, you already got him. You already talked. I'm like, get out of my way, you know, like, and then. Basically, I was like, "You're not. You're only gonna make yourself like, like an idiot on camera." And she did not look so great on camera the first time. And then I was like, "All right, I'm gonna be persistent. If you want to keep looking like an idiot on camera, go right ahead. I'm gonna put this on the, you know." And and then, but he was really cool. In fact, he did a media interview where it was him and Jake Gyllenhaal. They were doing this sneaker shopping video. If you ever seen on Complex, and Jake was super late for the interview, so Connor was like just hanging outside on this random street in Soho. So we got to like just kind of chill. Like I saw him like just hang with him and stuff. And then later in the day, he surprised he surprised did a surprise appearance at this bar and serving out his beers. And I went there. He gave me a beer, gave me a shot, hung out, took an awesome photo with him. And it's on my Instagram. And uh, I sent you the photos. It's a cool photo, right? It's a cool photo. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a. Pretty- yeah, it's a cool photo. Like, it looks, it's a great early scene. It Patrick's makes it look day. like you guys are like best friends. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, look at us. We're just getting drunk at a Ruby Tuesdays. Um, but it was some Irish pub in uh, Midtown. So, but that was really cool. Um, hopefully, the video goes well, make some news. We shall see. Back to our podcast. Today is the Royal Rundown. This weekend's the Oscars. Uh, I'll probably watch it. Dax, you? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm I watch a, it. I watch. I it. like to watch the big ones, so I will. I'll tune into the Oscars. I think there's a lot people want to talk about come next week. You know, kind of do kind of like maybe a rundown of what all happened, discuss it. We'll see. Yeah, I think we're gonna have someone who's gonna be there. Come on next week. Um, so all good things. Before we get to the raw rundown, we love reviews. We love them so much. We read them live on air. Dax, do you have a review ready for us? Of course. 
All right, this one comes from Alaskan Grown Girl. Five stars, best podcast out there. This is by far the best podcast out there. As an elementary school teacher, I listen to this podcast to help with my stressful days. Adam and Dax are great, and they have uh, a take on celebrity news and gossip that no one else has. Their perspectives are fresh and interesting each every week. I look forward to every Wednesday and Friday for the to their new episodes. Thank you so much for bringing me laughter when I need it. Annie A. Oh, Annie. You are doing God's work out there teaching kids. My God, I don't know how you do it. I have a hard time dealing with two kids. I can only imagine dealing with like 30 of them in a classroom. God bless you for being a teacher. Yes, Annie, but thank you for uh, supporting the podcast and leaving a review. And that's the best thing you do to support us because it helps out in the algorithm. Uh, we don't have a Patreon. We don't try to make it gross or weird. We just say leave a review. And we'll give you a shout out on air. It's pretty cool. So when you're driving, if you're working out, if you're just going for a walk, you hear your name on us. Yeah, we we try to show some love. I mean, to you. we wouldn't we wouldn't turn down money if you wanted to send it to us. Send us we anything, need, dude. We just I don't, don't need Patreon involved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Dad. Let's get to the raw rundown with the top ten stories of the week. How do we find the top ten stories? It goes on data. It goes on the Google searches. It goes on the clicks. It goes on our personal thoughts. Uh, but really, it comes down to the data at the end of the day. Dax, let's do our raw rundown, starting with number 10. All right, number 10, uh, that big executive producer, producer Nigel Lithgow, who did American Idol, So You Think You Can Dance, now, now hit with a fourth sexual assault suit. And this literally came hours after he was trying to call Paula Abdul a liar uh, because if you remember her accusation. So this fourth Jane Doe has now come out and in um, her paperwork basically said a few minutes after professional discourse, Lithgow suddenly forced the plaintiff against the property's exterior side. I guess they were like hanging out at his, at his house. Um, uh, against the exterior side of a wall, shoving his knees between her legs and then started licking the plaintiff's necks, touching her genitalia and groping her all over. Plaintiff uh, tried to push Lithgow away before, um, for her from her, but had to be, but she was pinned against the wall, so she couldn't move. Lithgow continued to grope and tried to kiss the plaintiff. Uh, she was able to then break free and immediately left the property and drove her away. However, the plaintiff was so shaken by the attack that she had to pull over and uh, only about a block away from his residence and then sat in her car shaking, crying for possibly 30 minutes before she was able to drive the remainder of the way home. So this um, this assault, let's see, you may, this is very similar to the one that Paula Abdul claimed that she had back in 2015. She detailed uh, a bunch of stuff in her lawsuit. And then there was a, a, a Jane Doe KG, a Jane Doe KN. All of them have now filed suits against him. He's been trying to keep up his reputation. He released a Wait, bunch Dax, of hold emails. On. When you say, when you, Dax, hold on. When you say Jane Doe, it's people who just don't want their name in the Correct. story explained. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just women who want their names left out of the story, so they're okay. They're it's an alias. Um, no, he wasn't only going for women with the name Jane. <laughs> yeah, so many Jane <laughs> Doe's out there that keep being raped by this guy. But yeah, go on. Um, allegedly, uh, <laughs> yeah, but allegedly. um, the the thing is, so he released a bunch of emails back and forth between him and Paula Abdul trying to basically discredit her uh, where she was, you know, calling him sweetheart and saying things like that to him. And so he was like, look, she's claiming that there was a sexual assault. But then look at this email where she calls me sweetheart and her team goes, oh, no, F you, Nigel. She was saying she was being kind because you're her boss. You have to look at the power dynamic between these two when you read these emails is basically what they said. They, you know, because at the end of the day, this is an executive producer of a massive show that holds her career in his hands. And so, yes, the way she was writing to him may have been um, flirty or not even, I don't even say flirty, but um, basically coddling him because she knew that he liked her and that she didn't want to get fired from her job, which they say is a very normal tactic of any victim and that he was basically victim, victim shaming her by putting out these emails. And so a lot of people very upset, but it seems like Paula and Nigel are going to war over this whole thing now. These are two people that I, I don't think Paula, well, I do think Paula will be very vocal about the situation. I think she, she is someone, and I don't know her personally, but I feel like she would do the media runs regarding this. She would go on 
you know, an inside edition, 60 minutes of today's show, Good Morning America, and talk about our experience with Nigel. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, so I think this is going to get really dirty, really wild. And I'm, I'm curious how it affects his career. I've met him once. I didn't even, honestly, Dex, I met him maybe twice. Yeah. When I met him, I didn't even know he was into women. So I, I this is what, the, that was like when I, this story first came out, this is the part that shocked me. Now, he could be into both. I just, I was just surprised by it. So um, uh, I met him. I think I met him twice. Yeah. I think, I think I may actually have a photo with him, which is crazy enough. I, <laughs> yeah. Now that we're like talking about, it, I'm like, I think I may yeah, have a post photo that Dex. Guy. Yeah. Oh, that'll, that'll go well. You get on that. People will love it. Like yeah. away people. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I see this getting pretty dirty and you're right. I think that Paula would be, one of those people that, you know, she's going to speak her truth. She is going to talk about it. And she feels like she has nothing to hide at this point. So to me, I think we'll hear more from Paul over the next few weeks. Yeah. All right, Dex. Number nine. Number nine, Amanda Bynes, apparently doing really well um, and excited to release a fashion line. So, you know, obviously, Amanda Bynes had a lot of uh, public meltdowns going over the years, a lot of substance abuse issues. Um, but uh, she kind of stayed out of the public eye for a bit. You know, she pops up here and there on Twitter or on X. She'll be, she'll go on Instagram every once in a while. Uh, but she's really focused on school and creating her own clothing line, at least according to people that are close to her. She's been t- attending the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in Los Angeles. She's been doing that for quite a few years now. And her attorney was talking to ABC News saying that she is doing absolutely great. She is happy. She's healthy. She's been doing great at school. She's focusing on her own fashion line, which is shaping up to be amazing. Um, and so uh, this is great. Again, you know us. We love the good comeback story. We want to hear about someone doing good. If Amanda Bynes is uh, ready to emerge from her cocoon, then I'm all for it. It's weird. People would think and I get this people all the time hit me up and like, if there's a, if there's bad stories about a celebrity, they're like, Oh, you must love this stuff. I'm like, honestly, sometimes it gets hard to kind of cover this. It's like bad news, no matter what kind of is, you don't kind of hurts after a while. Like yeah. it, it kind of, it's tough on the soul on a, on a, someone who does news like war stories. And after a while, it does take a toll on your mental health. And I know entertainment news is a little bit silly at times, but we really I also do think that we're not story. We're not like Perez Hilton, which is gonna well, I guess not old Perez Hilton, which will just like, you know, love to cover the shit. Like we it is hard to cover and you feel crappy covering it when you're just talking shitty about someone. So Yeah, yeah you have to I, cover not, it because it is a story, it. but I'm ex- I'm happy for Amanda Bynes. I mean, it's been a long road and uh it's still gonna be a long road. As long as she's happy, I hope she has a good relationship with her parents. I don't know. It so Dex, do we know if she has a? Yeah, yeah. I think she, I yeah, think she's so. I think she's good with her parents now. They're the conservatorship. They they were the ones that were kind of running the whole conservatorship and all of that. Um, but I I think she's doing well, which is great. She and she, there was a point where she was doing really well, and then it kind of derailed again. And it sounds like she's back on track again. But you guys got to realize, like when you have these types of like mental issues you you get on medications that are supposed to help but it's a balancing act you know what i'm saying like you give too much it doesn't work you don't give enough it doesn't work so like finding that perfect level of medication is often it takes years to really get someone stable so yeah uh, i'm hoping that's where we're at with her yeah that's great uh dax number eight oh for all those soprano fans out there Uh, You missed your opportunity. You don't get the big booth from the finale. It already sold for $82,000. I almost said $82 million. $82,000. This was that famous uh, booth that basically you see the Sopranos sitting in at the end of the season where Tony had his last supper. Well, it it was actually belonged in an ice cream parlor in, in New Jersey. And they said, look... We've, we've, we've wanted to keep this thing. It is a piece of history, but at this point we need to remodel the whole parlor. And so we got to get rid of this. The booths are no longer safe. They're actually going to, they could potentially injure our, our clientele. So we we're, we're just going to auction it off. It comes with the booth, the table, and that little like back wall. And the back wall has 
a um it has like a little sign on it that says this booth reserved for the soprano family and but it doesn't like little... come with the uh jukebox right there's a no, little there's like, that... yeah there's like a little tabletop jukebox that unfortunately will not be included in it but the rest yeah. is there pretty cool i mean would you i guess if you have the money where, where are you gonna put that in your house that's my only thoughts with it like one thing that went for sale years ago that sold for, I think it was back in 2019, it went for just under $900,000, was the Darth Vader Star Wars helmet. Dude, that's, that's so a, sick. That's a cool thing where you could kind of put out like on a table in your office. When you have a booth from The Sopranos, I'm just curious where that goes. I think that could be a little weird or difficult and to maintain you know it. You know, is we're not rich so we don't have big mansions with extra rooms and huge man caves within garages and like there's plenty of people that they're like oh yes i have plenty of room to put the sopranos bed you know little table or booth but there's also a lot of big companies that buy this stuff as well sure. i think you forget about like you know the Marilyn monroe dress remember that thing went for what was it like three or four million dollars the happy birthday dress that yeah, Kim yeah. ended up wearing um that one went to the, was that, uh, the, the museum or yes, no I, what, was it smithsonian or was it the museum uh uh is this real ripley's believe it or not i forget i don't even know which oh, one it went to i may be wrong with that um, yeah we have to i look mean that I, can, up. I can find it real fast <laughs> but you know what in uh from look that up but i was thinking of julie andrews when she did uh, Sound of Music, her outfit when they did Do, Do Re Mi, that mm -hmm. went for $1.3 million back in an auction in 2013. Again, that's like so – I just don't know if that audience is just so old. And I don't know if a young person, a young millionaire is like, I want the outfit from Sound of Music. However, some other no, person – No, but there was a, a lot of the highest price things were like Audrey Hepburn stuff, like her dress – from um, Breakfast at Tiffany's and all that kind of stuff. The Marilyn Monroe dress, you were right. It was Ripley's, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson, his Thriller outfit went for $1.8 in an auction back in 2011. Uh, oh, the other Marilyn dress, you know, the one from the Seven Year Itch, the one where she was standing over the like the subway grate and it blows up. That one went for $4.6 million. That's pretty cool. Uh, John, Lennon, John Lennon's Imagine Piano. That went for about two point one million. Ooh, uh, how about Adam West Batmobile, like the original Batmobile? How much would you spend on that if you had dude, a ton of money? I was gonna say I kind of I did just buy a car recently, so I'm like, <laughs> can did I you lease spend it? Four point two million on it? No way. Are you serious? Four point two million on that car. Yeah. Wow that that's pretty unique and insane, but also kind of cool. I think that's one of the few things that's worth it. You know what I have, Dax. Hmm. The value of it's nothing crazy because it's not a game worn shoe, but Shaq one year for for Christmas a holiday um, sent me his our first ever Reebok sneaker size twenty two, and he signed it and it's in like a big like fish like aquarium type frame. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So everyone like whoever comes by, they always like they see the shoe and they always want to put it on their arm to see how big Shaq's shoe is, and he signed it and. That's a pretty cool thing. I right? have a, uh, I have a signed jersey from the World Series that Kelly Grubber, Kelly Grubber, he he played on the Blue Jays, Toronto Blue Jays. I have his signed one that he wore during the World Series. I don't know, it's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. I got actually, you know what I have, and I, it's so funny. I rich, I always wanted an office. I'm never gonna get one, but like, <laughs> I I want I have probably about like 50, maybe 100, 11 by 14 autographs of like Adam Sandler, Jim Carrey, Howard Stern, Derek Jeter, Dave Matthews, uh, drawings from Dave Matthews, like all these like cool autographs I've gotten over the street, over the years yeah. from doing what I do. And they're just sitting like in a binder at home, like these big, beautiful pictures that uh, to frame them cost the money. And, but the autographs are worth a lot too. And uh, I have like, I have a uh, Matt Groening drew the Simpsons for me, drew like Homer Simpson for me. I have cool. like I have some really cool stuff, but if, I always said one day I want a wall where I could frame everything, and put it up. I just have no place to put anything. I have huh? um, uh, Brian Austin Green and I like we did portraits of each other, like we hand drew portraits of oh, each other, cool. <laughs> and then he autographed mine. So that was kind of fun. Oh, that's kind of cool. I have a. I have a drawing from – oh, Seth MacFarlane drew me Stewie from the uh, Family Guy and signed it. I've got um, I've got a uh, a clay sculpture 
that of a skateboarder that Tony Hawk made. I just bought a pog for ten dollars of OJ Simpson on eBay. I'm not even joking. I wish I had it that much. Like, I'm not. I, I could show you the bill. Why did you buy a pog, you idiot? Because I had that one when I was younger, and then I just like to go on eBay when I'm watching TV and just look up things from the '90s and buy random things. And I bought. It was like ten bucks. I was like, you know what? I just want this because I. It, it, I remember when I had it. It was like really cool. Um, it's, I wish that was tr- like not true, but I literally bought that like two weeks ago. It's so sad. All right, Dax. Number seven. Uh, number seven, Pamela Anderson going makeup free once again for the CR fashion book spread. Um, you know, she has been talked a lot about because she famously showed up to Paris Fashion Week without makeup. And I guess it was like a whole thing where she kind of it wasn't a planned thing. She just didn't want to put on makeup. And her family was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're not actually going to go out of the house without makeup, right? And she was like, I just I don't want to wear it and I don't want to sit and get it put on and she talks about how freeing it has been now for her to um to to be able to live this life without you know having to get hours of makeup done and so they did a whole spread on her can I say the funny part about this is how they are embracing and they are saying how great it is that she's not wearing makeup and then they do half the photos in the in the fashion spread with like her hair covering her face or fabric covering her face. I'm I'm like, I don't get it. (laughs) You just, you're talking about how great it is, but then you cover up her face half the time, whatever. Anyway, um, I, I, I cannot imagine what it would be like having to put on gobs of makeup every single day for all the, the red carpets and things that she has done throughout her life. So if she doesn't want to wear makeup, then fuck makeup. I'm, I'm on Pam's side for this one. Dude, Pam Anderson I don't think it's the credit or the acknowledgement that she deserves. I I just feel like she's been so, and I learned about her from, you know, it's kind of like what happened during the Pam and Tommy stuff. You know, Mm -hmm. when I watched like the document, the docuseries that came back and how it was for her and how that video really affected her career and how she was just really such a, a philanthropist in a way, like always trying to work for charitable things from with animals. And now like with this movement she's doing, she's like not one of these women that are trying to hang on to their beauty. She's kind of accepting her age. And that's gotta be a really big thing for a woman who's, you know, older now, but, and you don't see a lot of women doing what she does. We're really just embracing her age her her natural beauty. And it's, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I I I like it. I like the statement behind it. And yeah, uh, I, th- I think it's just people have to just get used to a different look. She's she's still beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, she's great. It's, you you see a more natural side. You see her freckles. You see things that you didn't see for years, and that's the only reason that it's almost a little shocking to see her is just because yeah. you're seeing her natural side. Yeah, it is kind of unique to see her, but I just think I don't know. I think it's really cool what she's doing. I don't think people are giving her as much credit or amplifying her message as much as it should be um because it is so different but Mm -hmm. you know good for her oh it's it's pretty awesome again i pam anderson for me growing up was a big part of my she was i had posters of her on my wall when posters were a big thing um so it's pretty cool but she also is not interested in going to baywatch so dax you know you hear about this we we talked about baywatch recently they're doing a reboot of this show and they i think a lot of people are trying to see if the old cast will come back but apparently apparently pam anderson has no interest in returning back to baywatch which is yeah so you know yeah fox is basically going to be rebooting this whole thing they're going to be spending a bunch of money they're teaming up with with everyone around the world to make this show happen again and they got a whole new cast that they're going to be um putting on this show and of course you're gonna want to see cameos from Hasselhoff and David Charvet and Pam, like, you know, other people are going to do it. Um, And listen, she says she has no interest at this point. But let me tell you, if this show does well, and they offer her a fatty paycheck, trust me, Pam Anderson will make a cameo. But I think that's the way to set it up is I have no interest. I don't want to do it. But like, show me the money. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, it's, I money's money speaks money a lot. talks, especially money we talks. know that Pam has had very um, 
well-documented financial issues over the years. And I think that if a show comes and they just want you to show up and be CJ for a hot minute and stroll down, you know, the boardwalk or whatever it is, a part of the show, she may not want a permanent role on the show, which I can understand because I think her life is very nice up in Canada, very chill down to earth now that having a full-time job filming probably doesn't sound fun anymore, but I think, she, I think she'll make a cameo if this thing does well. Um, it's funny. Kid Rock was doing an interview and, you know, Kid Rock was with Pam Anderson for a little bit and Kid Rock said about Pam Anderson. And I actually use this quote all the time and it's, it, it is tr- exactly true. And they say he was referencing regarding Pamela Anderson. He said the hardest thing in Hollywood is to be famous with no money. And it's not like she, she had money, but I mean, the money didn't keep coming in because of the way the public kind of turned on her at the time regarding the tape and kind of made her into a different image. And she was trying to, I don't know, the whole thing is just really tough. But I think Pam Anderson is doing some amazing things. The one thing from looking into this story I thought was interesting is that Baywatch was premiered as a show in the fall of 1989 by NBC. The show was canceled after one season. However, the producers of Baywatch, bought, they bought back the rights and produced a syndicated version of the show. And it was financed from like a German production company. And then the show ran for a really long time, about 10 more ten, seasons. Ten, 10 seasons. Yeah. yeah. So I think and that's pretty And became the biggest show in the world. And still to this day remains one of the biggest shows of all time. Like the amount of people that watch Baywatch around the world. So can you imagine being the person who decided to cancel that show? And then it turns into the biggest success. Like you feel like a douche. I mean, it's happened a lot of times where even like Seinfeld, Seinfeld was on the border of getting canceled when it first started. And then they stayed with it and the show became a huge success. And there's been a lot of shows. I mean, I'm, I'd, be, I'd be curious about how many shows people passed on. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden one network took a chance. It became a huge thing. Um, sure but yeah, I love, that, I love these probably that stories. With every show out there, honestly. I love these stories. I love the, you know, because I, in, in our business, we get a lot of no's. We get, a, you got to get used to the no's and it's very difficult. Yep. And then that one person gives you a chance and then you succeed. It's got to be just so feel good for everyone involved. So good for them. Don't worry, Next. Adam. One day someone will give us a chance. Okay. Just keep your head up, bro. <sighs> I'm losing patience, my friend. I'm, you know, I'm losing patience. Uh, Dax, number six. Number six, Jonathan Van Ness from Queer Eye being labeled a monster. So uh, there's a new Rolling Stone expose that uh, uh, really dove into Jonathan's life and the behind the scenes drama between the the Fab Five um, that were working on Queer Eye and basically saying that they, they had a bunch of sources that are saying that he was very emotionally abusive, had rage issues. Sources use word like monster, nightmare, demeaning to describe him. Um, and basically, it's a, it's a big contrast from his on-screen persona, who is very bubbly, cheerful, accepting of everyone, encouraging people to reach their full potential. You know, his big um, catchphrase is, yes, queen. And then, and then it, they said, but that all changes once you know, he's off the set. He's great on on camera, great at working with everyone, but then he's very difficult, according to them, in any capacity behind the scenes. Um, so obviously, this is, I, I think, shocking to a lot of people. I think it's very similar to the Ellen situation where you're like, wait, but the person I see on TV is awesome. Why am I hearing a whole different story of them behind the scenes from everyone around them. Um, There are, however, people sticking up for him. So, you know, take it for what it is. Uh, A bunch of people, a couple of the guys um, from, do you remember the, they had like a, a hometown heroes uh, kind of segment where they would go and talk to all these people who um, were the hometown heroes. And a lot of those guys are coming forward saying, listen, he was wonderful to work with. He was awesome. I have nothing but, kind things to say about him. Um, Then again, these are people who are not working with him full time. Let's put that out there. You know, these are people who appeared on the show that were getting makeovers and then that kind of thing. But I I don't know where the truth lies in all of this. There's some really cattiness, weirdness going on with the cast. The cast really hasn't spoke about the internal drama 
you know, mm-hmm. I, you can even see on social media how a lot of the cast members would hang and some of them wouldn't. And then the one one of the guys recently left the show. Uh, there's definitely something going on there. Is Jonathan Van Ness the center of the issues? We don't know that. Um, but from my experience, and I, again, mm-hmm. I'm not too invested in the story where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, I can't say that everything that Rolling Stone said was factually true. I don't know that. But there's got to be some weirdness going on with that. And there, 100%, there's definitely some tension within the group. Uh, do you watch the show? Um, I've seen, you know, like clips on YouTube, that kind of thing. Like, you know, when you've never actually watched a full episode, but you've seen clips here and there that are like the fun clips to watch, kind of similar to like the James uh, Corden show where you're like, oh, I feel like I've watched the show because I've seen so many clips, but I've never actually watched a full episode. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's a fun, actually sometimes depending on who they fix up, it's kind of interesting. Anthony, which is like he's like the cook. I'm like, what are you doing? Like he does nothing. It's been real. like it's like, you do nothing. <laughs> for nothing. It's like, I feel like Karamo Brown has like really rocket launched his career from this whole thing. Him so and he's Jonathan, got a, I feel like came out as the two big like stars of that show. Jonathan Ness has a huge podcast. People love him. Apparently, I was talking to a, a friend of mine who works as a publicist and said people really that his community love him. Karamo has really made a – he's a really good host. I don't know how his show is doing. He's got a show that he films in Connecticut. I don't know how the ratings of that show are doing. He's kind of doing a show out of the Maury and Springer – old Springer Studios and stuff. But, uh, yeah, they it's good. But, you know, this, but pe- not everyone is saying that, that John Van Ness was sort of hard to work with. I mean, there was a story that came up on TMZ saying that – you know, this is sort of untrue. Some people are taking having his back, right? They're saying, oh, he was actually very nice. But that's what this story is going to turn into. Someone else, a source is going to say, no, he was actually very nice to me. Or, I don't think he was a dick. So it's going to go back and forth, back and forth from my experience where the smoke just fire. Uh, so I'm not going to say he's an asshole, but he, because I, I never met him. But it's, it's, hey, it's good for the show. People are going to tune in. People, people who didn't know who he was now know who he is. Uh, number five, Dax Drake. Number Bell. five, yeah, Drake Bell, one of our former guests on on the podcast. He is now coming forward alleging he was sexually abused as a child actor by one of the Nickelodeon dialogue coaches named Brian Peck. Um, and so this is he's coming forward in the upcoming investigation discovery series, Quiet on Set. This is the dark side of the kids' TV. This is uh, a show that they're they're spotlighting all kinds of stuff that went on um, back in the day or around children's TV. And um, so basically he is saying that he was a victim of Brian's sexual abuse um, and he was the dialogue coach for all that in the Amanda show and which obviously Bell was a part of. And then, um, you know, Bell went on to basically headline his own series with Drake and Josh. Well, Peck was arrested in uh, 2003 on more than a dozen charges related to sexual abuse allegations involving an unnamed minor. In 2004, Peck pleaded no contest performing a lewd act with a 14 or 15 year old and to oral copulation with a minor under 16. So this guy is pretty nasty, nasty, nasty dude. Um, it, it doesn't, it, it's unclear who those victims are. Um, and Bell, Drake Bell has not specified the nature of the abuse he experienced, though he may actually talk about it during this quiet on the set series. So we'll see. Um, but I, I think we'll be hearing a lot more out of this story. Yeah. Uh, Drake Bell, tough situation. I mean, it's like, you want to support him. You want to root for him. I mean, these are his allegations. It is what it is. It's 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 his story, not mine. Um, obviously, he's had some troubles himself. He came on our podcast. Was super nice. It, it's funny. Even <sighs> we've had so many people come on this podcast. Where, like Aaron Carter, for example, they come on and we like them. We support them. We're like, oh man, this guy's a great guy. And then we didn't like we we knew there were some troubles. We read about some some internal troubles and then we yeah. talked to him for an hour and we're like oh man that's just stories we believe him and then we well, there's been you know, there's been a lot of i think people that have come on and they're like man everyone gets it wrong about me the media likes to trash me like tara reed the media likes to trash me i get a bad rap every time 
I mean, I like Tara Reid a lot, <laughs> you know, and I'm like listening to her story like, yeah, screw the media. So it, it's hard to say because some of these people are so good at twisting or manipulating their situation and they're they're successful because of their personalities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So who knows if we we start drinking the purple juice that they are offering us? I don't know. But there are I don't know. people that I've really enjoyed our, our conversation with them, whether or not they're a shit person outside of this. I enjoyed our conversation and our hour with them. Yeah. I mean, listen, I give this is Drake Bell's story. I give him a lot of credit, though, for like coming forward and speaking about it. Um, you know, does this kind of I don't know. Personally, it's like does this is Drake Bell doing this to kind of talk about his own weaknesses from his issues from, you know, Oh yeah, I got caught huffing balloons in my car with my kid, but that sort of stemmed from this. I don't know. It's, but I, I, I know I'll probably get shit for saying that regardless Drake Bell, obviously from the story had a tough time growing up and uh, it's gotta be a pretty insane situation for him. So I'm, I'm I'm interested in seeing his this story, the Dark Side of Kids TV, because it's an angle, it's a perspective that I never really considered or thought of, and I want to hear it more from from I want to hear their side of the story. So we got to tune into that. And uh, Dax number four, Camila Cabello. Yeah, Camila Cabello uh, opening up about why her and Sean Mendes actually broke up after kind of rekindling their romance. So uh, she showed up on the Call Her Daddy podcast and, you know, she said, look, I'm all about giving people a second chance or to trying, um, you know, uh, a relationship once again. I don't want to be one of those people who looks back and is like, damn, why didn't I try or why didn't I? put a little more effort in. Uh, but she said, listen, it wasn't anything scandalous or crazy. You know, they were they were photographed at Coachella last April after basically two years after their their break. They had dated other people and then they kind of got back together. And she said it just it didn't feel right. She goes, uh, you know, I'm it's crazy because I'm kind of impulsive in that way. If I feel it, I say it. And, you know, she said, the worst thing for me is to live in my mind. And then she goes, I'm like Ryan Gosling in the notebook, but the notebook, building a house for this person. So I would rather say it and see what happens than wake up the next day and find out that it's been heavily documented. I opted for that route. And and it's a fun, fun in the moment. And so but she said once they got back together, they realized, like, this isn't right. Like, what are we doing? We're, we're much better off as friends. And she speaks very highly of him. She's like, I will always care about him. I love him. He's such a good person. I'm lucky because people have exes who are awful and he is not. He's really kind. He's a good person. Um, so all positives between these two, even though it didn't work out the first time or the second time. But um, I just like that she's talking positive. We hear so many exes that just shit all over their you know the people that they were once in a relationship with with and it seems like these two are are good she uh she also was asked about how she was seen in i think it was barbados of all places i don't know where they were but she was on vacation quote unquote with drake uh, i don't know they're in turks and caicos i'm sorry and they're on Turks and, and there's photos of them kind of talking in a way that it's not how friends talk so mm-hmm. Alex Cooper asked her about those photos with Drake, and she said, we were on vacation with some work, which, quote unquote, I mean, what was the work? And she didn't turn away that they're just friends. Like, the way she answered the question, it seems like something happened that the two may have had some fun. Drake, to me, is like the quiet Pete Davidson, where he kind of hooks up all these girls but doesn't make it a big deal and doesn't – you know, girls want to be with him to say they were Drake, but he doesn't make them – boyfriend girlfriend type material like he just kind mm-hmm. of has fun for a night and then moves on they get to say they're a drake drake stays quiet and uh i don't know that's kind of the feel i get with drake so she gets to put that on her linkedin that she hooked up with drake that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool um which i'm surprised drake I, I i guess honestly he's a guy he does it for the story oh you know i hooked up with camilla cabella oh yeah that's pretty cool so it seems like they had fun on vacation again i'm just saying that as speculation but the way she answered the question, that's the way it comes across. Ugh. Dax, number three, Brittany and Jax. Do you think this relationship is real? Like this whole breakup? Or what are your thoughts on it before we get into the story? Um, don't give a fuck. 
Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think right. it's fake? Do you think it's a fake? I don't right, know. Go to, go to the I store don't know. So then we're going to talk about it. So what's, going, what's the latest with Brittany and Jax? So Brittany ends up dropping Jax's last name from her Instagram bio. By the way, everyone before we go in, is Jax, hold on. Before we, before we even go in, Brittany from Vanderpump Rules, not Brittany Spears. Okay? So I don't want to be like, what? Brittany's got a new guy. Brittany Spears and Jax Taylor from Vanderpump Rules. So what's going now on? You re- she- now you really confuse people because you just called her Britney Spears and Jax Taylor. Oh, my God. Are you right? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just so confused. Britney Cartwright and Jax Brittany- Taylor. We're talking about their relationship that I could care less about, but I'm still going to talk about it right now. Uh, so Cartwright, who had her name listed as Britney Cartwright Kachi, I believe is how you say his last name, uh, ended up ditching his last name Kachi, which is actually Jax's birth name um and so she's now back to britney cartwright but um everyone's talking about that because there has been a lot of talk about their relationship over the last uh, couple weeks they announced that they were separated they were very adamant about like look this is not a divorce we are separating she had moved out of the house but now uh, throughout this week it has been very confusing because she Jax did an interview and said oh no, no no like she's back at the house And then her team was like, no, 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 she's not back at the house. She came back for a little bit in between her short-term rental and the next rental. So now she's not there anymore. She's now got a new place to stay. So I don't really know what's happening. I know that there's been, um, she has responded to the speculation of like, is this a publicity stunt? She goes, no, no, this is not a publicity stunt. This is my real life. I need to do this for my own mental health. I need to switch some stuff up. And uh, she goes, look, if Jax, she, she, she didn't say he needs to grow up, but she basically said this is on him. Like, if he's ready to be that husband, that father that I want him to be, then we can, like, talk about getting this back together. But there were camera crews outside the house as she was moving some items out of the house this week in the Valley. You know, they they have their show the valley coming out and um and so i don't know if they were just documenting it for the show or what the case was that was the only part that made me feel like this was a publicity stunt i don't know if it was for the show or for them personally you got to realize though they've probably also watched scandal and how much attention that's gotten and they're like how can we get some attention here i mean i don't know if it's true or not but that that's been the big speculation is whether or not they're doing this just for for clicks i you know i know there's it's tough that when you what what is your take if you had a guess do you think this is the real deal do you think they said hey how do we kind of ruffle the feathers a little bit what are your thoughts i would say it wouldn't be bad for the show that's coming up that's what i would say i said any kind of drama breakups you you know this is like kardashian 101 you talk about it it gets a bunch of press but then you get to actually watch the show and watch it unfold and it's been working for the kardashians for whatever 20 seasons or ever how long they've been on is it it works you you tell the storyline and then people get to be invested in it my thoughts i think it's not i think if you're gonna get separated you might as well just go get divorced i think it's they're handling it both too well with the public. This doesn't seem too quiet. I think they're too smiling. She's being too outspoken with paparazzi on the streets. I think they, they're they taking a page out of the whole scandal situation, and it's good for business. The, at the end of the day, it, they have other businesses beside every, besides just the reality show and mm-hmm. gets people talking, gets people more interested in them. And uh, yeah, this is part of the game of it. I can't wait till like years later, these people eventually say, hey, what's our next chapter as far as working in show business? Let's write a book how we say we're going to get separated to make more money. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, they have a new show that they're working on. It's not like they're out of the limelight in general. So yeah, it's, uh, and it's good for Vanderpump. <sighs> next. Next. Dax, the number two story. Number two story, um, Lala Kent has announced that she is, in fact, pregnant. You know, there was a bunch of stories I think we reported on a couple weeks back about her uh, announcing that she wanted to have another kid and that she was going through IVF. Well, now she's announced that she is two months pregnant, expecting her second baby. Um, And, uh, you know, this is exciting. It's like a picture of 
um, her her child, her child's Ocean, right? Ocean's her her two year old. Yeah, I think I so. so. So Ocean, there's a picture of Ocean kind of like looking at mommy's belly, um, and a lot of people ask her questions. Okay, she 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 did like an Amazon live where she was talking about pregnancy Q and A, and you know she said, look, a lot of people ask me, how do you plan on raising two kids on your own with no dad in their life? And she goes, look, let me tell you one thing. She said. I feel like the name or the title of dad needs to go to someone who deserves it. She's like, there's a lot of guys out there who don't deserve that title. And then there's a lot of guys who do deserve that title. And she goes, I surround myself with basically a pod and it's like her friends, her family. Um, and she calls that her pod and she keeps, we, you know, we keep adding to that pod, like a pod of orcas. And she said that there's a, quite a few men in Ocean's life and in this future baby's life that ha are father-like figures. And I'm not saying that that means that she's dating them or anything like that, but maybe they're, you know, her friends uh, or an uncle or whatever that fill that role as a father figure. And so she basically says, like, I don't need a man to to be a great mother. So... Yeah, I'll tell you what, she was in, um, uh, she was in New York this week. She was doing Watch What Happens, and she was the big shot for photographers this week. I had a photo agency reach out to me. I had about three photographers reach out to me. Where is Lala? We got to find Lala. And she was the hot photo this week. She did actually do a smart move. She said she announced that she was having the baby on her Instagram and then she took it to her Patreon where she kind of gave out more information, more details about it. And then she had to, you know, kind of go and watch what happens and speak a little bit more about it. So she handled it in a way that would be good for her to make money. And, mm -hmm. uh, hey, listen, she's happy. We're all happy. I'm sure she's going to be a great mom. It's, this is something that she really wanted to do. Uh, so good for Lala Kent. And uh, hopefully next week we don't have a Vanderpump Rules story on the <laughs> countdown. Uh, Dax, the number one story of the week, the week before the Oscars. Oh, uh, the week before the Oscars, the list. So Forbes released the list of the highest paid actors of 2023. And it is ridiculous. And it's probably not the people you thought would be at the top. Um, let's start it for number 10. Denzel Washington made $24 million in uh, the year of 2023. Ben Affleck, $38 million. Jason Statham came in at number seven with 41 million. Leonardo DiCaprio also 41 million at number seven. Jen Aniston got in there for 42 million with obviously the morning show. Uh, she makes like $2 million an episode on that. And the murder and mystery too was a, a big hit. So she made a ton of money this year coming in at number four was a tie. Matt Damon and Ryan Gosling tied at 43 million. Obviously Ryan Gosling had Barbie under his belt and then uh, Matt Damon had Oppenheimer. And then number three was Tom Cruise, which I feel like Tom Cruise is normally up there in the top. He releases a lot of movies every year, and they're always big blockbusters. But Mission Impossible was a huge one. And then he still obviously had a bunch of residuals coming in from Top Gun Maverick. Um, Margot Robbie came in at number two with $59 million in 2023 um, because of obviously Barbie. And then she had a lot of back end, back end profits off of the movie as well because she was a producer on that. So she raked in some fatty cash um, by being a part of one of the biggest movies of all time. And in at number one, Adam Sandler was 70 three million dollars and uh that paycheck big part in thanks to netflix's murder mystery 2 um netflix had reported there was 173 million hours of it watched around the world in the first three months of it being on the platform and um you know he's a big producer behind that he stars in it and uh so crazy 73 million bucks for mr sandler yeah uh, is there any names on there on that list that surprised you at all Adam Sandler being at the top surprised me. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, again, he had a different, he has a different deal than everyone else with the Netflix deal. Uh, he yeah. just came out the new movie Spaceman that not too many people are really talking about. I'll, I'll I, I saw previews for it. it. I'm interested in it. I, um, my wife and I are big Adam Sandler fans. So I think love we'll Sandler. Up, yeah. 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 Uh, we'll end up watching it. We obviously watched murder mystery, murder mystery too. Um, we also love it. Jennifer Aniston. So both of those were easy, easy watches for us. Um, I think 
I was a, a little surprised to see Ben Affleck. I know that obviously Air was a huge movie for for him. I just didn't realize he'd make thirty eight million. So that was a surprise. Was- Jason Statham, that one shocked me because he's always in like you know the, the random Fast and Furious movies, Expendables. Um, but I didn't see him bringing in forty one million dollars. That was shocking. Yeah, and it's crazy because, I mean, that to me is the real Oscars. And then you have the Oscars that are going on this week. And you look at who was nominated for Best Actor this year for the Oscars. And it's Bradley Cooper, Coleman Domingo, Paul Giamatti, Sam Murphy, Jeffrey Wright. And we don't really have those names on the list. For actress, we have... I think that it's always been known that a lot of the big blockbusters are not the same ones that necessarily get nominated for the awards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I actually, this is what I like about the Oscars. And again, the Oscars are this weekend. I love the beginning. I watch the first like 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, then I tune out a little bit and watch some sports. And then you tune back in for like the last hour per se, because they kind of make I, it like hot up and down, up and down. Yeah, I do uh, like to see, great. I like to see the the monologue by the host. Sure. Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel will be back this year hosting. Um, so I always love to see that part because I want to see like who they're making fun of, how you know what they do. I I like the musical performances at some points during the show. Um, but you're right, like the big awards kind of come at the end, and that's the ones everyone's are talking about. But just for everyone's knowledge, if you are interested in watching the Oscars, they will be taking place this Sunday, March 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and they air on ABC. So if you want to tune in. I'm sure we'll be talking all about them uh, next week and do some kind of uh, wrap up. We we have a couple calls out to people that either will be at the Oscars covering the Oscars or deeply involved in the Oscars. So I, I'm sure we'll we'll have some good tea for you next week. Exactly. Thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. If you're listening, please give us a review. Um, yeah, guys, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, run it all. We got a private Facebook group called Off the Record, which you guys should join in. Uh, follow me at Adam Glenn, follow Dax Holt at Dax Holt, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up, come on, let's go.